and now this is ready to um, bring the uh, the trees in from the file that the uh, the other file we created. We're going to first we're going to um, choose the formal trees layer. Let's move this along. I'm going to add an extrude, capping the top and the bottom. I'm going to position these. Um, I'm going to set these to the the height I want. set that to two meters and a, a person will be able to walk under them easily there we go uh, and we're also going to be uh, creating uh, clipped trees uh, sorry bushes down here so we'll put an extrude on there as well And you can see they're not uh, they're not extruding the tops and the bottoms, so we'll have to check those to see why they're not doing that. Let's go in the top viewport and choose a spline. Uh, well, these vertices here aren't welded, so we'll choose all of them. And we'll go down to weld. Uh, sorry, at vertex level, we'll find weld. Set this to next to nothing. And this will make sure that they'll only weld if they're sitting on top of each other. Go back to the extrude and that should that should have worked. So there we go. Uh, they don't need to be that high. Yeah, that works for me. And um, I think before we uh, export these uh, out, uh, save these out so that we can create the custom foliage trees and bushes for them, I think before we'll do that we'll just finish um, adding in the uh, assets that we already had in this file. So if we press H uh, we'll be able to choose one of those and go and have a look at it. Um, now this uh, obelisk is going to sit in this planter here so I'll just center it there we go and move it down a bit and then choose them both and in the top viewport I'm gonna move this over to the I want to put them inside these uh, square areas here so one there I'm going to shift move to there as an instance twice and then I'm going to right click and select similar so it will have picked all of those up or all, all three of those up shift move down to the centers there and again two copies very smart. Uh, now I'm going to choose uh, this tall grass is going to fill these planters up basically. So I'm going to choose the tall grass and the planters and hide everything else. And uh, I'm going to go to the top viewport again and bring this over. And uh, you can see this object is, uh, it looks skewed. Uh, if we go to scale and then press uh, F10, F10, F12, uh, that's for the scale transform type in. And you can see it's been previously scaled. I've grabbed this from another, uh, from another file. Uh, if I type in these all back to 100, will sort it out for me and it's also being rotated there we go so 
So if we change it from bounding box uh, to preview, we can get a bit more of an idea of the size of it there. Uh, and we're going to uh, move it down to here and then shift move it along uh, a couple of instances. We don't need those. Select similar, just uh, center those and then shift move them down. those I'll delete them and I don't really need those either uh, okay so they're going to fill up all of the planter there but they're very um, uniform so I'm going to use a, a script uh, one of lots of different little scripts I use and this one is the simplest one and uh, so I'll go to max script and uh, I've saved this uh, script in the project folder. Go to run script and we're going to go to uh, the project folder, uh, my documents. Oh, not there, there. The Dropbox and it's this one here, multi MSR, which is uh, move, scale, rotate. And uh, I don't want to randomize the movement, I don't want them to move them out of place, but I do want to randomize the scale. I think they could definitely all be a bit smaller. So I'm going to type in 80 as the minimums for each of these, and then press scale. And they're all scaled by a different amount. And then I'm going to highlight rotate, uh, click rotate Z and rotate a couple of times. And uh, it's randomly rotated. Uh, so when the when this renders now, it should appear. Um, you shouldn't see that you, you you won't be able to tell that this is the same model repeated, and they're still pretty big. Uh, if I if I change the scale here, I might have to go back, render this, see what it looks like, and then change it later. But I think they could definitely be uh, a bit smaller, like that sort of size there. Select similar. Right, I'm going to shift move to there to create uh, instances twice again to pop, pop them over there. Oh, I should have done that three times, so yeah, never mind. There we go. And then select similar. You can display these as V-Ray proxies as bounding boxes as well, uh, just to take up a little less, um, speed things along in the viewport. Uh, so shift move those down three times. There we go. I think I need to move these down more. And again, these down, uh, just making sure I deselect the dirt we don't need these in the ponds, so we can delete them. And uh, these are these are all the same now. So we're going to use that script one last time. Select similar. Uh, run script, multi MSR. I'm just going to change uh, the rotation. So those are all unique now. And um, a quite a useful thing to do with these proxies is uh, to create a new layer and I'm going to call it V-Ray Proxies and I'm going to move all of these to this new layer uh, so now I can quickly turn these on and off and uh, this is really useful when you're xrefing files if you've got um, a big project and you're xrefing it in um, three or four different max uh, scenes to create the, the finished um, uh, project, um, the layers will all work. So if you turned um, if you turned V-Ray proxy layer off in your master scene, for example, it would um, it would turn all of these off um, in the XREF scenes as well. So it's a good way to organise 
um, large seams with the layers there. Uh, unhide everything. Um, I think we really are um, finished there now. I'm going to resist uh, a render. Uh, I'm just going to get these um, bushes here done and then do it and then see what it renders like at the end. Uh, so I'm going to choose the bits that I need to export. Um, but like I said, um, I don't need all of these. So what I'll do is, again, I'm going to save up. I'm going to save up to example garden three. Um, and then I'm going to choose these guys up here. I select invert and delete those. And the same for this. I'm just going to choose these parts here, inverse, delete. Choose those both, file, um, save as, save selected. And I'm going to call these, um, it doesn't matter what you call them, I'm going to call them untitled. Uh, we're not going to keep those for very long. Uh, and we're not going to save this file. We don't want to save the um, the delete that we've just done. But what we do now, what we do want to do now, is open the uh, particle flow, the the the, um, the very last um, file that we created, which was zero zero three. Again, it's got that um, mesh object in, which I'm going to delete uh, and save that file, so I don't have to do that every time I open it. Um, unhide everything. Uh, whilst I'm whilst I'm uh, working here, let's just bring this right down. And try and remember that I've made that change. Uh, go to File, Import, Merge. Um, go to that badly named file we just created, Untitled, which has the two um, uh, guides that we're going to use, and bring those in. There we go. So we can see this. Uh, these are actually quite a bit bigger than the, uh, the the tree we've made here, but that's fine. It doesn't make any difference at all. We're just going to scale everything up. Um, right. So we'll do these trees first. <laughs> 